Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard basic tactics video. Today we shall be moving on from the heavy weapons of the Imperial Guard and taking a bit of a step down, scaling it down and looking at the one man special weapons of the Imperial Guard. Uh, you guys know the format by now. I start off with what the weapon is, uh, I then move on to um, what it combos well with and then I would also uh, go where you should put them in your platoon. The where it combos well with should be a slightly shorter section simply because most of the time I've actually covered that in the heavy weapons section but it's still, I'll still mention it, I'll still mention it because this might be the first video that someone comes across obviously. So the sniper rifle is a pretty iconic weapon in, in any wargaming uh, environment, any tabletop wargaming environment. Uh, like many of the weapons that an Imperial Guard get, it's based on sort of modern military sort of things. Um, and so it's not particularly a unique weapon, but it's pretty good. It's pretty interesting. Now, in the new, in the new in inverted commas, com in the new in inverted commas codex, the sniper rifle got a major buff, not in the fact that its stats went up, by the fact its points went down. Sniper rifles became the cheapest special weapon that you can buy. You can now get a sniper for two points. That's right, two whole singular points. That's a fantastic deal. That's what makes us the sniper even worth considering before it was never used because it wasn't worth it now for two points makes it worth considering does it make it good do people use it hmm maybe does it make it worth considering we shall see so for two points you get a weapon which is strength x ap6 the strength x basically means it has a sniper special rule what the sniper special rule means is that anything that you shoot, which has a toughness value, not an armor value, a toughness value, you wound it on a four plus. And if you get a six on the to hit roll, you get to choose which model you put the wound against. It's called precision shot. So the sniper has a bunch of special rules mixed in. It's got the sniper special rule, it's got the precision shot special rule, it's also got the rending special rule. Okay, so if you get a six to hit, you get precision shots and you get to choose which model that wound goes on. So for example, if you have, if the enemy squad has a melter gun and you roll a six to hit, rather than you doing the wound against the nearest model, you could choose to put that wound on the melter gun guy in the squad. Now, if you choose to put that wound on an enemy character or an independent character, they still get to try and look out Sir. So normally speaking, snipers are best used for, for quite literally, sniping out special equipment. Characters will generally just pass the wound off onto a goober. So if you then, then you, then you roll to wound. Now, anything, this is the, this is the sniper's biggest uh, strength, but also its greatest weakness. If you're trying to wound a Toughness 6 Khan effects, you wound it on a 4+. If you're trying to wound a Toughness 2 Brimstone Horror, you wound it on a 4+. It doesn't matter what it is, you're always going to wound it on a 4+. The exception to this is Gargantua Monsters Creatures, which you will wound on a 6+. But that's just their special rules and their bullshit and they shouldn't be in the game anyway. Now if you then get a 6 to wound, so you've got a 6 here, if you then get a 6 to wound, your shot counts as Rending counts as AP2, which means your opponent will not get an armor save against it. They'll only get an invulnerable save. And as we said before, most characters have invulnerable saves, but you'll find that most special weapons in a squad are just used by basic grunts. They don't get art, they don't get cover saves. Oh, cover saves. They don't get invulnerable saves. So if you get a roll of a six to hit and then a six to wound, you can choose where you want that shot to go, and the only save your opponent will really get is either an invulnerable save, which is rare on a special weapon, or a cover save. So, it's pretty good. Now, snipers have lost the pinning special rule, unfortunately. What used to happen is if you killed someone with a sniper, they were forced to take a leadership check. 
And if they fail that leadership check, they'll be forced to go to ground, which against a lot of armies really fucked with them. Really fucked with them. Um, but as it is, they don't have that rule anymore, which is unfortunate. So that's what you get for the sniper. It's actually pretty potent when you think about it, but its biggest downside is you still have to hit on your crappy guards and ballistic skill. Back in days gone by, for those of you who didn't play in 4th edition and before, snipers had another special rule, which was they always hit on a 2+. plus. When that was the case, snipers were worth it. Oh my god, snipers were worth it. And then I think 5th edition came along. Could have been 4th, but I think 5th edition came along and snipers no longer hit on a 2+. plus. They started hitting on their regular ballistic skill, which is a shame. But that's a trip down Reminis Alley. So, what does a sniper combo well with? Well, unfortunately, not a lot in terms of heavy weapons. It kind of combos well... It just, it just doesn't really combo well with anything, unfortunately. Unless you know you are facing a lot of monstrous creatures, unless you are playing against your friend... And every game he brings monstrous creatures, riptides or uh, carnifexes or anything like that. Then the sniper rifle combos well with the Laz Cannon. Because the Laz Cannon is good for killing anything tough and nasty. Aside from that, it doesn't really combo well with any heavy weapons. It kind of does with the mortar, but that's just because the mortar is also incredibly cheap. So you could fill out a special and a heavy weapon slot in an infantry squad for seven points with a mortar and a sniper. Kind of works well. Uh, it kind of it kind of goes with the uh, heavy bolter simply because it's a cheap upgrade for anti-infantry. But the grenade launcher goes so much better with you know the heavy bolter and the auto cannon. And it it doesn't really go well with the missile launcher to be fair. Again, if you were using it to snipe monster creatures, maybe the sniper would also help. But generally speaking, the sniper doesn't really work in, unfortunately, in the regular infantry squads. Um, I've heard a lot of people say, or I've had a lot of comments say recently, I like to put two snipers and a mortar in my platoon command squad. Um, and I can kind of see that working. I can kind of see it having a home there. But remember, again, you're only hitting on fours. That's the problem. You're only hitting on fours. And in a platoon command squad, I guess at least, you know, you could buy yourself two snipers and like a bolter for the officer and a mortar. And you'd have a semi-potent squad for 40 points, you know. For 39 to 40 points, you'd have a semi-potent squad. But honestly, it doesn't really fit there either. Because again, you're struggling to hit with your ballistic skill three. Now... The sniper does have a home in the special weapon squads. When the guard codex was f first released, there was a lot of talk. I don't know how. That was this is back in sixth edition. It's less relevant. It's less relevant in seventh. But in sixth edition, the sniper rifle special weapon squad was actually pretty good because back in sixth edition, only troop choices could secure objectives. In 7th edition, everything can score and troops have got objectives secured. But back in 6th, there was no such thing really as objectives secured. It was just troops can score, everything else can't. So the sniper special weapons squad was very, very popular in, with guard players because for 36 points, which is the cheapest option you can get by our bare bones uh, command squad, you could take a six-man squad that could plink away you know, taking a wound off here, taking a wound off there, and you could put it on an objective in a ruin, and you generally your enemy would forget about it. Because what you've got to remember is special weapons, because you have to take three special weapons. But if you have to do that, and you want to take the the cheapest way of getting a scoring unit, uh, and you, you don't need the officer to hide out of line of sight, take a sniper special weapon team. That is less relevant now in uh, in seventh edition because obviously everything can score, but it's still worth remembering because a lot of the time what your opponent might do is he might boost over, let's say a riptide for example, murderize the um, 
murderize the regular infantry squads and be like, oh, I've got your objective now, I'm, cont I'm, you know, I'm, I'm controlling it. And you can say, well, no, you're not, actually, my sniper squad is objective secured. So a lot of people don't expect it, it's more of a trick, but there you go. So generally speaking, the snipers belong in the special weapon squads because they're a cheap way of getting snipers on, uh, the sniper rifle on the field in general. The problem is, and this is slightly, this is an extension obviously, is the sniper rifle, there is a dedicated sniper rifle squad, and that is the Rattling Snipers. The Rattling Snipers, I've covered in the Elite's Choice, but essentially for, for 10 points a model, you can take Rattling Snipers, which means for 30 points you can get three sniper rifles. And considering we're in 7th edition where everything is scoring, that's actually six points cheaper than taking a sniper rifle special weapon squad. So if you really want to include sniper rifle special weapon squads in your army these days, you should really go for rattlings. Because rattlings are built from the ground up to work with snipers. They have stealth, they have shoot and run, and they have, most importantly, ballistic skill 4. So that's why you should really go with rattlings. Now obviously rattlings are uh, toughness 2, so they'll die very easily. But generally speaking... It doesn't really matter. Differ you know, the difference between toughness 2 and toughness 3 isn't a big deal, especially you know, with instant death and shit like that. It doesn't really matter. Um, the only downside is a lot of people don't like the look of the Rattling Sniper models. They look, they look, I think they look kind of cool. They look a bit goofy. Uh, and the older ones look... The, old, the newer ones look very scruffy and the older ones look a bit dated, but they still look pretty cool. Um, the thing is, is that I've used Rattling Snipers a lot, right? I use them... Because you could, they come with infiltrate, so for 30 points you can outflank a unit into your enemy's deployment zone and get line breaker for a mere 30 points. So that's what I've used rattlings for in the past. Um, the thing is, is that when I use rattlings, I just use Cadian snipe models, Cadian and Castan snipe models, and no one, no, no one knows or gives a shit because at the end of the day, your opponent doesn't really know the difference between a rattling sniper and a sniper smash weapon squad. Okay, so there you go. Quick video. Probably one of the quickest ones I've done for these basic videos, basic uh, basic tactics videos. The sniper rifle is a cool weapon. It's only two points. It kind of struggles to actually do anything. But at the end of the day, it's so fucking cheap that you can't really complain. So obviously, you guys let me know how you guys run your snipers. It might give me some ideas. Uh, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys next time.